Welcome back, everyone, for the final second half of Polaris. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> and, uh, Understatement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Lavender, you, it's your turn. It is my turn. And also, sort of your turn. And so it was. Hmm. I gotta ask some questions first. Where did where did Tegmini get left off last time? She was destroying the Temple of the Sun. Yeah, gotcha. I think I think we just left off with her. And we destroying the temple and being like, okay. Oh, aren't your servants gonna murder everybody? Um, oh yeah, you're gonna kill you're gonna kill all of the worshippers and tear down the temple. Right. That's right. Yeah. I gotta kill all the worshippers and tear down the temple. Mm -hmm. I mean every one of them that gets the chance to repent and not die, but Oh you didn't say that. I mean last out. None That's of them not, are going not to. Part of your, so uh, you need to argument. hurry up and make it a law. <laughs> Do we want to go backwards? And I say, and so it was. No, you, no, no. That... Start wherever. I can just. You set the scene. You, okay. You tell me. You, I mean, yeah. you could say, and so it was that Tegmine stood over the bodies of all the slaughtered. And then she's like, exactly you have far too much. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one hive mind later. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was that Tegmine stood over the bodies of the people she was trying to protect yeah you, you definitely ask far too much there perfect um what you marking I'm gonna mark not of the order of the stars cause like I said I, I definitely believe as a as a sworn knight, she will give them a chance to repent as they have been led astray by the blinding light of the sun. Mm -hmm. And so she stands before some cowering people, sword pointed, and says, Repent, you have been blinded by the blinding light of the sun. But only if these people are ready for you and they are rioting and you are vastly outnumbered. But only if my entire cadre of the despised is with me. Um, so while we are outnumbered, it is a few trained knights versus untrained people. And that was how it happened. Yeah. Uh... So you are you're vastly outnumbered and what do you say to um, the blinding light of the sun has corrupted you. Renounce the ways of the sun temple and revere the stars once again as true people. I will spare your life. She is blinded, open her eyes. And then people start coming towards you. Uh, Tigmine gives the order as the, the knights like square into formation and says, I do not want to harm you, but I will not hesitate to strike you down if I see you have been corrupted by this demonic religion. Several of them are are wielding strange arcane instruments. 
and they overwhelm your formation and start pointing the instruments into your eyes so that you can see the sun without being blinded. Uh, yeah, you, you ask far too much. Okay. <laughs> that is going to be uh, the cadre of the spies to come to my aid. Perfect. As uh, we, we push them back. Midnight sword raised mm. high. So we're trying, but you're well protected. We are well protected. You have brought this blasphemy to our lands, and you're trying to show the sun to me. This is this is madness. Repent or die. Strictly in your left ear, you start healing, hearing yelling and a struggle. And one of the cadre of the despised, Pollux, slices down um, two people in the mob. But only if that is enough to cause the mob to break. But only if the mob I'll see you as their march lord. But only if they will also repent from their sun worshipping ways. And that was how it happened. And that was how it happened. Uh, as the, the mod breaks, Demune turns to Pollux and uh, says, Thank you for doing what I could not. Absolutely. They seem to be calling down now. Good. We will purge this heinous religion from our lands. I'll keep an eye on it. You have an officer to attend to. Go. Go ahead. You seem awfully eager, Pollux. You used to be such a shirker of your duties. What has changed? I finally became... After I became a knight, I... I took my vows and that changed me. As I imagine you understand. It took a little longer for them to change you than it did me. But it suits you. <laughs> I agree. All right, then. Pollux is going to start reforming like not here and now but after you leave Pollux is going to start reforming these people and he is going to follow the directions of the senate which is linked to the order really tightly at this point mm. but he's just going to hand down like laws and orders from the Senate who is like all in bed with the order. Um, <clears throat> and 
was how it happened. And so uh, it was. Yeah, that's how it happened. Cool. And as the stars watched. And the moons wept. Let's get some XP. Okay, you remembered. Yay! Yay. <laughs> okay. Um. I think you did. I don't want to ping you twice for because it's kind of like we have to take care of the sun worshippers and then this is the scene where we take care of the sun worshippers I don't feel like it's fair to do it again and she did give them a chance to repent so I mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. yeah I, I I don't think that that's XP yeah oh, that's fair um I think the comment to Pollux, like, just like the snide comment, counts as apathy. Okay. That's the one that I'll give you. Well, also, Pollux is the mistaken, and she's like, hey, I kind of like you now. Yeah. yeah. So you could also give her sympathy for the mistaken for being like, hey, Pollux, you're not so bad after all. <laughs> Three. Blah, blah. Pollux, what's gotten into you? Well, I'm a sudden worshiper now. <laughs> oh, that's cool. No, mm -hmm. no. Murder. Uh, so, is it two? Or just the one? Uh, yeah, I'll give you two. Okay. Double refresh. Hey, you refreshed twice. Good, good for you. Double <laughs> refresh. That's definitely what everybody wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's okay. I had I'll to survive. Move so I can move <laughs> um, get it, because I can't ask for death. Because you literally can't die. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I've changed my mind. Actually, I was gonna play Aqualay since this is gonna be my final scene, but I'm Not gonna play. I was I mean, probably gonna be my final scene because mm -hmm. Te Tegmine has more story to be told. So I would assume, but. I'm way more interested because Aqualay is unconscious. I don't care what's happening with her right now. She, she <laughs> might die later. I don't care. She's fine. <laughs> She's fine. She's I am fine. way more interested with this challenger mm. approaching um, the unnamed man. Well, the challenger was defeated, right? No. we. You, you said that only if you can overcome them and stuff. But, but we it's me. Seen. Yeah, it is you. Yeah. Another we thing haven't is, seen that. Oh, scene yet. I thought <laughs> it was. I had assumed it was an eternal battle. No, it's you. Okay. It's, it's you walking. It's literally a, a me. It's yeah. you and it's you coming at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh well, okay. <laughs> and so, so it was that the unnamed knight stood before Ein. I'm going to take Ayn into my mistaken. <laughs> oh, I wanted to play both sides. Um, I mean, you can if you want, but I'll, I might take over then. So here, you can have Ayn. Yeah, back. let's just get this wrestling going. Yeah. For love and justice, I will <laughs> defeat you. <laughs> and in so the name of the stars. And so it was that um, the nameless knight stood before Ayn, Knight of the Sun. All right, that's cool. You can take it out of me now. <laughs> In the lane of the stars, I will punish you. All right. <laughs> and then the two of them release their auroras, and they, the auroras clang off each other in a horrible cacophony. And one of the eins grabs the other ein by the throat, and the other one punches him in the face, and... <laughs> They fly through the nothingness as the stars shined. And one of them grabbed a beam of light and broke it off and shoved it through Ayn's chest. And then Ayn got him in this nasty elbow punch thing on his head. And it hurt really, really bad and knocked him out. And so one of the Ayn's we don't know which one is just floating around with this beam of starlight through it, through his chest. And then um, even though 
I didn't know what it was. The edge of the ice still cared. And an ice, ice walkway bubbled up underneath them and created a, a, um, a bridge to the greater world. So the iron with the light beam stuck in his chest walks out onto the bridge. But only if every step Ayn takes melts the bridge. But only if the Ayn that is left behind belongs to the mistaken. I don't think that that's possible because Ayn still has to exist. Ayn still has to have his heart. He can't die yet. You ask far mm -hmm. too much because game rules. <laughs> Do I? I, mean, I don't know who I am. Here's the thing: you you have to you have to exist somewhere. I so do. You're, you're 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 the um you're the you're the focus of your scene. So if we're watching okay. an Ein walking along an ice bridge, that's got to be you. Otherwise, we need to stick with uh, the other Ein. Well, what I'm well, I was describing both Ein's. Yeah, but you, I can't. Because and then game I was rules, you have determining to... which I you got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the one that is walking out is is okay, the heart. Yeah, that's, the that's one that is left saying. behind yeah. is All the right, one. That yeah, I got to confused. See. I thought you were saying that there was only one I left and it was mine. Oh, no. And I'm like, okay, I don't think you can ask. That's some bullshit. <laughs> you, you that would have been bullshit. That would have been bullshit. You can have some iron. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's fine. So you can I iron if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. I feel like you're not if you don't me. dance, then if you don't <laughs> dance, then you're... Well, was that... Okay. <laughs> Listen, I have played some games of nonsense before. Okay, so we see Ayn, um walking across this ice bridge. Um, yeah. And... You can still put only if me. Or say I, I can't leave myself behind. Um, all right. So, but only if it belongs to the mistaken. Okay, mm -hmm. sure. Um, but only if. The Ein who is left behind seeks solace in the sun. Mm. And furthermore, what are you taking? Checking, checking off face of the cloth. And furthermore, the edge of the ice recreates the city that was lost with all of its inhabitants. I'm also going to tick priest of the cloth and say, but only if this new city is a city that now worships the sun. I was mm. muted. You mean it and furthermore, not but yes. only if. Yeah, but yeah I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, wrong key You're phrase, good. correct mechanic, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hmm. I want to add furthermore to that, but you said I don't have control over the auroras, right? No, the auroras are mine. You have control over the armor that has the auras in it, and you can unlock them and unleash them, uh... but then what they do is my domain. <laughs> I want to say something cool. I can't say it. Curse you, narrative control. <laughs> um... Hmm. All right, and furthermore, uh, God, I used the Aurora armor somehow. <laughs> uh, that's all you got left. That's all I got left. 
You don't even have your name. <laughs> <laughs> what are you what are you trying to do? Maybe your moons can help out here. I'm trying to say that when the ice bridge melts that nobody can leave the city. And I was gonna say because the Auroras would be released and, you know, patrol the outlands of the city. But I can't do that. Um All right, I'm gonna say, and only if. And for no more, you can't say uh, and only. If. Yeah, and only if the new <laughs> keyword. <laughs> oh wait, there's one keyword we haven't used. Let me check really quick. Um, I know that there's the one where, but it was yeah. not meant to be, and you completely negate the scene. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Ooh. And there's some which use ice and light, which we aren't using. Oh, I didn't put the, uh, it was not meant to be yeah, in you didn't. the previous rules. No, I can't use it. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. And furthermore, if I allowed anyone to leave the city, the Aurora armor would break. That was how it happened. That was how it happened. So Ayn, with the uh, bolt of starlight in his chest, walked out of the city. Um, and But you're not controlling that Ayn. You said that that's my Ayn. No, the one that got stabbed in the chest with the that that was that was the one ball. that was. It's the one that walks out of the city. Yeah. The one that got knocked unconscious is the one that's in the city and it's what was left behind. That's what you control. I'm very confused. <laughs> it's fine. Go for it. It's fine. You have other NPCs. <laughs> and though I did not know the meaning of what he did or the words of those he met. He everywhere he went, mistakes would be healed. But only if, through healing them, new worst mistakes were born in their place. Mm. But only if that was all part of the Edge of the Ice's plan. But only if the Edge of, of the Ice and its love is actually a love of destruction and it wants to destroy the people. Hmm. That would kind of fit considering things that have happened so far. <laughs> <laughs> but only if that doggo. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's a good dog. I was like, did you kick doggo? I was so afraid. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but only if that destruction extended to the demons. Mm. But only if that destruction that extends to the demons is more like an unfortunate consequence of the destruction of people and not the true intent of the edge of the ice. All right, and that was how it happened. That was how it happened. <laughs> cool. And, uh, so, it and so it was. Okay. Nice. Lavender. 
key phrase. Uh, I think of XP. As the stars watched. <laughs> okay, so um, seeking back souls to in the status quo. Seeking souls in the sun. Um, that's an XP. Um. Okay. I think that's moons. Is that the only XP? Because we, we mm. talked a lot more about what happened with the world than what happened with our nameless little line. That's true. Oh, man. I should have given you more shit. To... You should have, yeah. <sighs> it's okay. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're you going to play yourself in your next scene because you can't play your mistaken. So give me more shit to play with there. That's so weird. <laughs> All right. I will roll this 1d6. Get a 1. Get one. Get one. Get one. Get one. I see another one. Oh, all right. He's still in love with the edge of the ice, and the edge of the ice is hatred of the people, basically personified. Yes, two. Yep. Perfect. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Roll twenty doves. You need to listen. You need to give me a one. Yeah, you one. understand? One. You understand one. that? Roll twenty doves. One. I want you to go, and I want you to click on the uh, quantum bullshit and turn it off. Let's put fill it full ones. Alright. Yes! Yes! <laughs> nice. oh, a refresh. Right. <laughs> a refresh. Okay. Alright. But that's you know what? That's okay. We got what we wanted. We got what we, we got wanted. Another another weary knight who could have um, now potentially die. And I can ask for the destruction of the world. Yay! <laughs> my blasphemous prayer worked. Not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> I gotta move priest to the cloth so I can move your other stuff. You know. I'm so happy. Yeah. I think we're all happy. <laughs> and now next it'll be Golden Stern and yep. we have to do a scene with either the Frost Maiden or the Solaris Knight. Ooh, yeah. All right. Yay. And so it was many eons past. And the pain upon the people was multiplied. And the ice melted and the sun grew larger and larger. Until life itself was pain. And whatever the nameless traveler walked, that pain was lessened. But and one oh, day, yeah. okay, the pain was lessened because the nameless brought hatred into the people, and in that hatred, they forgot their pain. But only if that hatred was of the nameless one. You ask far too much. I'm taking priest of the cloth. Now they hate you. They don't hate you. You 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 bring hatred, but it's not of you. Oops, I did the wrong side. Sorry. But only if it was hatred of the edge of the ice. Um. Is that less enough? It's not lesser. Okay, it's not lesser. All right. Um. If only, but only if, but only if. Hmm. The the one I responded to was, wherever I go. You you reduce the, the hatred, hatred, is what gives them. Yeah. Uh, all right. But only if that nameless one hated that as well and sought to free himself of it. But only if 
the only way the nameless one could free himself of it is to completely destroy the world. Mm. And so it was, but I don't do it yet. <laughs> First, I come across the other three PCs who by now who have all fallen to become demons. Um, but only if the Solaris Knight is also there and is leading them. And so it was. So the Nameless One stands before what were formerly nice at the stars. And now there are no stars. How do you react to this nameless one? Midnight black blade <laughs> pointed at his heart. Do you understand now? The Solaris Knight asks. understood for a long time but as long as I still draw breath the world cannot end you cannot win I don't need you to die to win nor do I really care about you at all <laughs> it's not with animosity that I stand before you. I simply come showing you your fate should you not die. Every night falls consumed with callousness, apathy. It is unfortunate, but it is your burden to bear as well. The night who used to be called Ayn. He now bears no name. He can't escape this. And Do you, you even know what comes next? You get betrayal of the people added to your fate. Oh, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't matter what comes next. I mean, you'll fall. Or die. Those who don't will fall and join our forces. It is inevitable. Because of the mistake made long ago, this is our fate. Mm. Do not hide from your fate. Face it. But is it really betrayal if I end their suffering? Depends on how you look at it. I don't really care. Perhaps the question instead should be, is it really betrayal if they have betrayed you first? Good question, take me now. I don't know that I've been betrayed by anything other than my own actions. There are many ways to let go. Oh my goodness, that's what I was worried about. <laughs> Hold on, a dog needs holding, and then I'll I'll keep talking as microscopy and be right back. All right. <laughs> Dogs, dogs are serious business. Yeah, I. You I, know, you firsthand. You you got you got your own serious business. Dog. I do. Luckily, <laughs> she's she's downstairs, my lady. So, <gasps> look, there's a dog. Oh, oh my god, oh. it's a dog. It's good because it's a dog. I just like those Twitch streams are nothing but animals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Well uh, worth it, because dog. Yes. Exactly. Alright, lay those harsh truths upon me. There are many ways to let go of your... of your mistakes. Pick the one that makes you feel most comfortable. If you don't want to turn against them, then don't. You will still be doing the work of the mistake. The stars are gone. No, we only cannot see them. No, they're gone. They've abandoned us. They will not We're better for it. Mm. We don't need them anyway. You fight to uphold a fiction. But no one turned away from the mistaken and heard the song of the stars. But only if that song was a song of farewell. And I understood what that meant. And let the world end. I asked for my death. Okay. And the death of everything. Yeah, I was going to say if you die, but only if you the, the world <laughs> dies too. Yep, there you go. <laughs> All right, that was how it happened. And so it was. Oh, that was good. So it was. Yay, I got what I wanted. I got to ask for the end of the world, and I got <laughs> it. I'm so happy. <laughs> you sure did. That's the first time I've done a triple inquisition on one other player, and that was kind of fun. That was Actually, really it good. kind of was. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, you know, with the world ending and all, uh, I'm willing to go ahead and skip my scene here, and so we can just do a flashback to Microscopium's fall. Sure thing. Okay. And that dog. <laughs> doggy, doggy, doggy. Um, and there was a puppers. Mm -hmm. And so it was that microscopium became the successor to the Solaris Knight, thus becoming the Solaris Knight. And in great flowing robes that these robes are wild. They have like a train behind them and stuff, and they glow as bright as the sun. But only if whoever is trapped in the shadow of these robes becomes shadows themselves. That was how it happened. Microscopium looks over the Senate, which he now. Controls completely by. But result. only if you are never satisfied by your power, no matter how complete it is. That was how it happened. I think your children are all helping to carry your train, being very careful to stay out of the shadow, but they all have like blood down their cheeks because they're all infected by the plague again. Yes, totally. And Virgil and is they, laughing. And they have like sallow, hollow faces because you're not taking good care of them. You're just giving them enough food to so that they survive. But mm -hmm. they're like these like these little stick slave children. Mm -hmm. now. I have absolved I Absolution is like forgiveness, right? Dissolved is the word that I'm thinking of. Okay. I've yes. dissolved the, the Order of Stars and merged it into the Senate. Um, because I didn't appreciate the hierarchy that the old order had where the old knights would command over the new recruits. 
and now everything works in perfect democracy. I have one question for you. Yeah. What did you do with Aquile's unconscious bleeding out body? You can't kill her. She still has hope. But what did you do with her? <laughs> I... You could kill the knight that she was with. You totally could have slaughtered him. I'm down for oh, that. Oh, yeah. What... Screw the guy. No. <laughs> it's worse. You're my... You're my eyes and ears to keep control over the Senate to make sure that we have just like a one party system doing as I, I wish. I don't think she would do that. So I think she's still unconscious. What do you okay, do? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, you can't screw with the heart that way, I guess. That's a proof. <sighs> hmm. Where does she sleep before the world ends? You shove her in a cave somewhere, just leave her bleeding on your floor? I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, throw her into the sun with a giant kale pot? I, <laughs> I rebuild the sun temple that was both just, that was destroyed that when we both got there. Yeah. And I bury her in that and plant a flower in her grave. Oh gosh. And, and I I'm visit not regularly. dead. I'm just buried alive underneath the ground. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, <laughs> I've got like But only if you visit that grave once a year. But only if I'm keeping like this entire greenhouse set up in the temple. But only if, in your rage, you destroy it every year, and your servants have to rebuild it before you come again. But only if we rebuild it, we started having to rebuild it, not on the North Pole, but in Upper Canada. And so it was. <laughs> <laughs> but only if it became bigger and more grander every time. Yes. I like that. And that was how it happened. And that was how it happened. Awesome. And so it was. Mm. That Kelsa had a floating plate. Oh, hey. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks, honey. <laughs> She's the best. Well, what do you, you think it has? What happens to Tegmine? Hmm? Tegmine. Like, Tegmine was like on your dark council, right? Probably. Am I wrong about that? That makes sense. All right. Like, that makes it's, sense. Not, it's not a giant stretch that to be like. Pollux is doing the work of the Senate. Oh, now the Knight of the Order of Stars is the Senate. Now, the, here's who we report to. Go see the Knight of the Order of Stars, which is now the Senate. And then, mm -hmm. how does Tegmini react to all that? Um, I mean, she's been stripped of her title of Marsh Lord and has been kind of without power and a little bit of a slump I guess mm -hmm. so being being offered some more power I think she'd definitely take mm -hmm. it I think the mark of your return to power is microscopium as head of the senate handing you back your travel mirror which he got from Aquile's body yeah totally yeah awesome nice all right i'm satisfied <laughs> so it was and then there was no point to give you more xp 
Yeah. <clears throat> no, because it's already... It's all yours. You have it all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. What is our... But that all happened long ago, and now there are none who remember it. Because we're over, right? Yep, that's it. We're over. And uh, there are none who Delete remember. the VODs! <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, wow, that was really good, and I'm secretly happy that we got to destroy the world. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not, not really secretly. secretly happy. I am like openly happy. Mm -hmm. We all know that this mm -hmm. is my jam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, destroying the world. It's so good. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, why aren't there more games where you can destroy the world? Right. Absolutely. Can we destroy the world in Firebrands? Probably. Uh -huh. Yeah, probably. Probably. Is there a game I mean, for that? I mean, there is... Bantral is one world, and we could destroy it. Mm -hmm. I'm into I mean, that. There's mech fights. Those those can get pretty nasty. Oh, totally, yeah. <laughs> oh, and heartbreaks. There's there's that, right? Mm -hmm. That too. That could destroy a world. But how about stealing time with each other? Can that destroy a world? Maybe if the way I mean, they steal time together is like in, in an atomic. Silo, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> nuclear <laughs> bunker, <laughs> but Someone same thing. The launch button. Just... <laughs> While the world burned. Yeah. I mean, that's what happened with me and um, I think it was the Tux. Well, when, when they were still Tux. Lily? Mm -hmm. Lily. Yeah. Sorry. It was what happened with me and Lily. Um, the last time we played Firebrands, we were literally getting smooches while uh, while they're firing missiles at it. <laughs> Look, oh, that's we, pretty good. We flipped the coins wrong, and now we got discovered. We can't have that leaking. Let's burn it all down. Our houses will be so <laughs> mad at us. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's Fair great. Verona. Great. Oh, beautiful. Well. Thank you all for coming out and joining me on this wonderful adventure. Um, let's, uh, I mean, do we want to talk a little bit more about uh, what, what happened in this uh, whole run? Cause... I would be happy to. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because like, we got some time. So... I, yeah. I really enjoyed the way all of our disparate characters kind of came together into the different stories and how loosely connected and tightly connected they were at different parts and i i thought that narrative worked really well yeah i know that i was with you guys when you were in the moon and then sometime afterwards but we don't know what happened there yeah and i don't think it was important to know you know it's yeah. like one of those legends where there's there's those um, famous heroes, and sometimes they work together, and sometimes they're on their own adventures. You know. Yeah. What happens when Elminster and this <laughs> other guy walk into a bar? We don't know. Not the world important. wonders. It's not. That's not important. Yeah. So. I will say. And I know that it's designed to be kind of hard to go from zeal to weary, but I'm really frustrated that I didn't get weary. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like it's supposed to take like seven or eight or a dozen sessions. Yeah. That's we a got lot these really sessions. bad nights, guys. <laughs> we tried real hard. We tried real hard. Uh, I guess mean, we did do fair. a really short run of this, so. Yeah. And I was going to say, to be fair, I mean, there were lots of times where I, you gave me the bait to get XP and I just noped right out of it, even though if I wanted the XP, I should have grabbed onto it and it just didn't feel like that would was what Aquile would do. She, mm -hmm. she was trying really hard to be a pure knight. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was really interesting watching you play in that way too, since that is normally not your play style. Yeah. And I, I'm normally not that kind of character. I feel like yeah. Tigmine yeah. was was also trying really hard to be a pure knight and um 
having what happened the, it, it was it was the um it was the sun temple that was that was her tipping point of wow she could not let that stand that was when weighing between the different facets of knighthood the the sun temple um being there was what took priority for her so I wanted the Auroras to be more of a thing. And I guess they probably had a play in destroying the world at the end. Yeah. I'm going to say, probably. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was so much happened much really fast. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought they were going to be more of a thing. And, and they weren't too much. Yeah. Yeah. I almost wish um, I had more, like... Like, I'm almost wanting attractive qualities from Firebrands so that I have a little bit of a better idea of how to play all of these characters. Because, to be honest, mm. there's a lot of them. And then when you're playing the new moon and the full moon, that problem only gets worse because you're not playing those characters as much as your heart. Yeah. yeah I I... Go ahead. I didn't do anything with Kelso's character. Yeah. But I did so much with the others. I felt like, all right. Yeah, like I think um, Celeste came up once it, yeah. when I when I was your mistaken, and we had it was mostly Sheliac, a little bit of Phoenix, and then Microscopium, who was not played by Golden because <laughs> it's Microscopium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I definitely feel like as as a moon, I wasn't sure a lot of times where to insert myself and I didn't feel like I had the creative freedom and maybe I should have and didn't but I didn't feel like I had the yeah. creative freedom to like add characters to a scene like mm -hmm. with uh, Tegmine I was playing your lover and you were out on the field most of the time yeah that yeah. kept happening and in most of the scenes it was like it didn't make sense to bring them in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I was like mm -hmm. I don't know it, it was about you anyway so why bring other characters in. Like Something I tried really hard to do this time is uh, create new characters in my sphere and insert them in the narrative. Mm -hmm. um, you also give the mistaken ideas. Um, mm -hmm. But because every time, other time I play it, I just spent, sit here on the moon and be like, what the heck am I going to do when I'm the hero? <laughs> and I have always felt that it's like disrespectful to the other players. Mm. So I just really tried to invest myself in everyone's story. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like we all did a good job with that. Like, I feel like we were all really invested in each other's stories. I definitely know that whenever I was in a moon, I was trying to think, okay, is there a thing that I should be doing as a moon? Otherwise, I'm just paying attention and yeah. seeing, okay, where's that, where am I seeing XP? How is this going? What are they going to do? Um, how is this down, changing the world? How is this changing the world? But also, Are they going to kiss? <laughs> <laughs> but I know one thing I was thinking about a lot was like when it would come down to um, you ask far too muches. How can I help say, okay, if they're not sure what to tick, what yeah. can they mm. take in this? So mm. I can help them with that too. But as far as like narrative control, playing one of the moons i felt like there was i didn't do that very much i i think um i i think part of it was the the way in which we had kind of came up with characters for the moons like i i feel like there was not a lot of npcs that were introduced by um either the mistaken or the heroes in their own scenes there was not a lot of side characters it was a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the hero and the mistaken character. Mm -hmm. And that like matters too, because you don't as a moon want to just like make up a character that it doesn't have like yeah. any hinges on anything because then like, what's the point? And like, when you're trying to do that, that's a little bit of guesswork. 
And not only that, but it kind of feels like you're overstepping a little bit as a moon, is how I was feeling. Yeah, and look at how the conversation is going between the heart and the mistaken. It's going really quickly most of the time, and mm -hmm. like you don't want to take away their spotlight there because exactly, yeah. yeah and there's I, no like time where you ask a question of your full moon or your new moon so you don't you're never afforded the space yeah as a moon either so mm -hmm. well say that's an interesting oh. idea i want to hear again so you're saying that you asked hero was she gonna ask the moon questions I'm, like, in my imagination of how a better version would go is, like, there's some part where, like, maybe a key phrase or something where you, as the heart or the mistaken, turn and ask a question to the full moon or the new moon. That way you can give them space to talk. Hmm. Does that make sense? Well, I guess I was yeah. kind of along a similar lines, just saying that it would be helpful if when framing the scenes, the heart or the mistaken add some NPCs that are not necessarily in the realm of the mistaken. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I agree. Okay. <laughs> well, good, good. We're all on the same page. Good. I was really upset that I never end up bringing in Zandu the prophet. Hmm. Because when you were like, oh, yeah. he lives in those caves underneath there, I'm like, oh, that's a perfect time to bring him. But then, like, oh, you want to be let out. All right, then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's okay, because if I had done that, I would have ended up stealing Zandu and made them a prophet of uh, demons. So, you know. <laughs> mm, that would have happened. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. But, you know, those are all things we can do in another time. It's true. I did really enjoy this and I, I liked it the way it plays is so different from anything else because it's all about making those declarative statements it is and and uh I actually stole um a theme from this for an upcoming game I'm gonna be in uh me and one of the other players are going to be siblings and we were discussing like how we're gonna establish our past history and it's like I don't want to sit and write up an elaborate backstory. So what if at any point we just have free reign to say, you know, remember that time when, and if that fits your premise of your character and it's fine, just roll with and you continue. If it doesn't, then say, that's not how I remembered it. And then we'll just sideboard that plot point until later, until we can talk about it. Like, off screen. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, more games need keywords. Mm -hmm. And it, it just felt like uh, definitely that idea came to me from having played so much of this game. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I was actually looking over um, Consumed, which is the new name for Mortally Bankrupt, which is the mm -hmm. game that I was talking about mm -hmm. in my shout outs earlier. Um, a lot of the way that game has played out or how it's been designed within like the past year is very subconsciously stolen from Polaris because there's like the heart is like the reality stars, the mistaken is like the eldritch horrors, and then there's a spot for people to play as the neighborhood, which is just like both moons combined, basically. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So having seen this game that is definitely one of those subconscious influences that definitely comes through nice it's always interesting when you can recognize that in in your own designs yeah, yeah. awesome well i think that's a good way for doing some segue for doing some shout outs so lavender why don't you start uh tell mm -hmm. people about uh where they can find you and where they can support your game mm -hmm. but first <laughs> i will have to concentrate through all the bullets <laughs> and the kisses. Yeah. Hi, you can you can find me at <laughs> twitter.com <laughs> slash dark lavender void. There's no final E in lavender. Um 
but you, if you want to give me money and help me make my game, um, I need to update my Patreon so that it says I'm creating consumed instead of creating mortally bankrupt. Um, you can find me at patreon.com slash void, and there's no awkward one of the E's is gone thing there. It's just Dark Lavender Void. Um, I am finishing that game up pretty soon. So that's how progress is going on that. Who is next? <laughs> Let's go with Estaney because she laughed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Estaney. When I'm not here destroying the world, I am on my own Twitch channel where I do variety streams and art streams every Wednesday. Um, I also have a Patreon for my art. Rewards just went up. They were a little bit late because I was sick most of last month. But I do a wallpaper every month for my patrons for $1. And I do art video kind of how-tos kind of-ish. How I do the anyway, for $5 patrons. And I have a store where I sell stuff. <laughs> Yeah. And I have an Instagram, so uh, I I me. have some of that stuff that you sell. Yeah, eh. there it is. my top selling phone case right there. It's so good though. Like it it's is. it's perfect for a phone case, and I absolutely love it. Thank you. And I love supporting you. So, <sighs> all right, Golden. How about you? What interesting things are you up to these days? Where can people find yeah, you? Yeah, when I'm not spreading pain and suffering throughout my, the world, uh, you can find me on twitch.tv, where I golden wh. We make the stars without number. Um, we're on... Um, how did our GM describe it? Techno-anarcho-capitalist nightmare world. <laughs> it's the only TL5 world in this sector. Oof. And... Everyone lives in underground bunkers, and the world itself is like wasn't able to be terraformed because it's full of really dangerous monsters. Wow! So we have we came in to rescue this this uh, base of man. What do they call it? The um, there's this group in Stars Out Numbers that doesn't like AI and tries to restrict technology. And they're basically wiped out. And this is like they're basically their last hope. And we got there and half their guys were dead. And they didn't have any equipment. So we're now hiding <laughs> in an underwater mine that is the ruins of one of these bunkers that already has been blown up once before. And oh. one of our characters just got a background info dump and is about to kick the hornet's nest next session. That sounds fun. So. Yeah, I concur. That sounds fun. We're having a lot of fun <laughs> with that game. Oh. I think about my next character is going to be Ungoliath? I think I can make Ungoliath from um, Lord of the Rings with a biocyanocyst. Hmm. That'd be fun. Yeah. Nice. Or well, I'll just TPK and they want to play they want to play Burning Wheel for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not amused. It's so fun, though. Hmm. I've only played it like I've only played two sessions of Burning Wheel, and they were really fun. But yeah, I enjoyed it when I played Burning Wheel, but mm -hmm. um, that was a long time ago, and there none who left to remember it. Unless you have Twitch vods. Then you can remember there, it very well. There, and no one my, will ever forget it. <laughs> it's on my YouTube page. If you go to youtube.com slash Kelsadelphi, you can see it there. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, everybody. I'm Kelsa. This has been my channel. Thank you for coming out for this episode of Polaris. Uh, our schedule is going to be changing here, and I will tweet about that um, 
uh, once uh, we're approaching the new show dates. Uh, Polaris is over, but this group is not. Um, we love you all, and we'll see you next time.